I'm Saturday hauling for you guys today and I'm going to go ahead and start off with a couple of repurchases. This first one is from AG Care, previously known as I believe AG Hair Care and this is the Conditioning Mist Detangling Spray. So I had purchased one from the one and only Argan Oil from Sally's, a leave-in conditioner because I could not find this product anywhere and it's because they redid like their packaging and then also kind of the labeling and stuff. They It looked to, it looks to me like they revamped the whole line. So I was so happy to see this back in stock on Ulta. So the nozzles have changed to a more standard kind of spritzer where the ones from the older one had kind of like this, I don't know, like a spritz nozzle situation. It wasn't just like a simple sprayer on it. So they switched that and then the labeling is a little bit different. But I use this every single time that I wash my hair and it just really helps to comb it out. And I've got fine, naturally wavy hair that's really frizz prone. And this helps so much to tame the frizz. And then it also adds the shine, makes it really easy to comb out. And it's just a product I absolutely love. So I picked up two of them. And then I also ran out of conditioner. So I purchased the Color Extend Blondage Conditioner. I go through conditioner much quicker than the shampoo. I feel like I'm not the only one. <laughs> but this is a purple tinted conditioner. I use this in conjunction with the shampoo. And then I also kind of like to alternate it with the one in the blue. It's like a moisturizing one as well. But red can just make some of my absolute favorite shampoos and conditioners. So I got another one of these guys because I ran out of conditioner. <laughs> and then lastly for repurchases, I got another one of the COSRX Advanced Snail 96 Mucin Power Essences. It's a 3.38 fluid ounce bottle and it's made in Korea. This is a product that I've been using for a very long time and I use it after my treatment products in the morning and at night. I use two pumps of this. So at night I use the uh, Curology um, kind of blend that they have with a retinol in it and then during the day I put it over the Paula's Choice Clear 2.5 I'm trying to get the box open 2.5 percent benzoyl peroxide to help um, keep my blemishes at bay so this is what it looks like and I had stopped using this for a minute um, just to see if I would notice like not having it and I noticed, <laughs> so I had to get it again. But the bottle that I'm currently using is like down to there, so I decided to go ahead and get another one of these guys. It's just an amazing essence product that adds some hydration and it just makes the, your skin feel so soft and like hydrated. So love this stuff from COSRX. And then I also picked up this KVD Everlasting Hyper Light Liquid Lipstick. So it's a new formula of liquid lipstick from the KVD brand. And I typically don't go for these type of products, but I swatched this particular shade on my hand and I was just like, oh my gosh, that is the prettiest, brightest neon bright orange. I had to, I had to. <laughs> um, anyway, let me show you the packaging here. There's 0.23 fluid ounces of product and this guy's made in the USA. So this is the packaging and the shade that I got is Torch Ginger number 70. And I was so excited to put this on today. So I lined my lips with the Too Faced, um, what lip liner is this again? This is the Lady Bold in Badass, which is one of my favorite liners. So I lined with that and then I went in with a really thin coat of this because I, I believe you like, I'm not a liquid lipstick expert, <laughs> but I put a light layer on first and it went on really streaky. And then, so I put a little bit more on and I was having a hard time like getting the streaks out of it. So I let that initial kind of layer dry. And then I had closed my mouth and it started to get patchy in the center and it was still kind of streaky. So I put another layer of it on to try to get it to look really even on the lips and let that dry. And I just could not, <laughs> it looked so like, dryish and goopy and it still wasn't even like on my lips and it's one of those ones that dries down pretty solid and so I took I think I took a bit of the pharmacy cleansing balm because I, I couldn't just wipe it off and I removed it <laughs> because it just did not look very nice and then so I went uh, back in with the Besame Misty Coral lipstick which I absolutely love I'll swatch it next to this too so you can kind of see it but this color is stunning the application not so much and I just I could not it felt not that nice on the lips and it just looked kind of not cute <laughs> so I love the packaging it's got some super cute packaging um, I'm not crazy with how long the wand is I always feel like they get kind of bendy when they're this long but look guys this color is stunning it is so pretty but yeah I mean I just could not get it to look not streaky 
on my lips. Like when I'm looking at it, I can see some streaks in it. Granted, my hand is lighter than the natural coloring of my lips, so I think I could see the streaks better on my lips and I can kind of see it on my hand. Um, but let me swatch it next to Misty Coral, which is what I actually have on my lips today. I went in with the Misty Coral lipstick from Besame after I removed this, just because I just couldn't. <laughs> and then another one that I really love that's a bright orange like this is the, I don't think you can get this anymore, but it's the Fenty Pout Sickle. But I thought I would mention it in case you guys do have this, because this is one of my favorite bright orange lipsticks as well. It's a shiny formula. So you can see the KVD one is a little bit, yeah, in, in person, let me see if I can put my hand a little bit further back. It's just a brighter, punchier shade compared to these two, which pull a little bit more orange. There's something about the KVD one that's got like a neon factor to it that is so pretty. And I was so disappointed in how it looked on my lips. So anyway, showing it to you guys, I'm just not crazy about it. If you've used these new ones and you're like a liquid lipstick wearer, I would love to know what you think about this new formula from the KVD brand, just because I don't know enough about like solid dry down liquid lipsticks as some. So I'd like to know people who have a little more knowledge on the liquid lipstick front or have tried a lot of them if they think that this is a good formula or not, or maybe I just, you know, because I'm not a huge fan of the solid dry down liquid lipsticks that I was just like, it doesn't look cute. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but it really didn't look cute. So that's the Torch Ginger number 70 Everlasting Hyper Light Liquid Lipstick, which is a new one from KVD. And then I also got really excited to see this new product from Bare Minerals. It's the Complexion Rescue Brightening Concealer with Broad Spectrum SPF 25. I got the shade Fair Opal. So this is like the concealer version of their Complexion Rescue for the face. And I swatched it in the store and the color looked really like pretty and it felt nice on the hands and stuff like that. Um, <laughs> and when I went to use it today, I put some on my finger and then dabbed it underneath my eyes and then went to blend it out with the sponge. It was, t it was terrible. I, like, I don't know where the product went. It like lifted up um, product on my skin. It was patchy. It just looked horrendous. And I tr put a little more on. I tried to blend it. It was patchy. It looked, it was to the point where, and I don't do this very often, where I thought it would look so horrible that I was going to wash my whole face off and redo my skincare, which I do not like to do. And then I was like, okay, hang on grab a different concealer and see if we can't get them to blend together so that you don't have to wash your face. <laughs> and so I did. I went in with the uh, Beautiful Skin Radiant Concealer from Charlotte Tilbury and went over the top of it and I was able to blend out my under eyes so that I didn't have to wash my face off. But I could even see some uh, if I if I get really close, I can see a little bit of gathering and then kind of on the top of my cheekbones where I was trying to blend out that concealer it was picking up my uh, foundation product. Uh, anyway, I'm not crazy about this product, which is really sad because I like the claims behind it. So it's a lightweight concealer, instantly brightens the look of dark circles, reduces visible under eye puffiness in two weeks. Can attest to that. Won't be able to attest to that. And protects from UV damage. Um, light to medium buildable coverage with a natural finish. And then this guy here is made in the USA. It's a 0.338 fluid ounce squeezy tube bottle. Again, I got the shade Fire Opal. Oh, I had such high hopes for this. And I love a product with um, an SPF in it. And this has got an SPF of 25. But we will not be using this again. <laughs> I just, it just was not cute, you guys. Um, not a fan. Not a fan at all of it. Yeah, I guess upon, like, closer inspection, it doesn't necessarily look like the smoothest of, like, it almost like emphasizes some texture and stuff on top of that. But yeah, not a fan of this guy. I was just not able to blend it out by itself. And I even added more, like I said, it went patchy. It just looked really, really awful. <laughs> so not crazy about this one. This is the, again, the Complexion Rescue Brightening Concealer from Bare Minerals. And that is the uh, Fire Opal shade, which was the lightest one with the cool undertones. Another brightening concealer product that I picked up is the Milani Under Eye Brightener. This is a new one from Milani, and I got the shade 01 Rose. 
This has got 0.2 fluid ounces of product and it's made in the USA. It's one of those squeezy tubes with the sponge on the end. And this has got a lovely pink undertone, which I love a pink undertoned concealer, especially for underneath the eyes. It's very nice and brightening. Um, it is, in terms of coverage, there's not a whole lot of coverage. It's definitely a light coverage product, but it does brighten. So when I use this, I kind of put it on like I was putting on a concealer and then realized that I wished for a little more coverage and then layered another concealer over the top of it and it did brighten up the concealer that I had used in addition to it. But even, I, I typically go for a pretty light product underneath the eyes and this felt really light underneath the eyes. It felt kind of hydrating as well, but it's it was a little bit too translucent for me to want to use it by itself. So I think I'll really enjoy mixing this or like changing the tones up of some concealers that I wished were a little bit more pink. And then those concealers can give it a little bit more coverage as well. But it's like I said, it's very, very light coverage. I think you can see right there how it's kind of translucent on the back of my hand. So that's the Milani Brightening Under Eye Tint. So they are calling it a tint. It's the Perfecting Conceal and Perfect range but it does say it's an under eye tint and like I said when I used it um, and I tapped it underneath and then realized it wasn't enough coverage and put a concealer over the top it was it was a nice like brightening kind of product and then since getting the Danessa Myricks Lightwork 4 palette that had the pressed chrome flakes in there Curiosity got me and I went ahead and I got one of the multi-chrome gels in the little pots. So this is the Infinite Chrome Flakes. And this guy here is made in China and there is a total of 3.8 grams or 0.13 ounces of product. So this is the box packaging and the shade that I got is Sweet Tooth, which from my understanding is a newer shade in the range. And the little pot is just cute, right? So I like these for what they are. Like when I when I tap them over, either I have a shiny color on the lid already or I have a, a matte shadow look from the uh, crease all the way up to the brow and then I tap these on the lid. There's something about them that looks really, really pretty. You kind of have to be careful about how you apply them so that they don't look like too like creasy because they can crease they do crease on my eyes when I put them directly over like an eyeshadow primer but I just take my finger and kind of blend them out um, but there's something about them that looks really cool or it adds a little bit of a interesting dimension to an eye look so I did go ahead and pick up this one and it's it is really pretty for whatever reason I feel like the flakes in this one come off a little bit larger than the flakes that are in the pressed versions from the palette um, so typically what I do is I just kind of pick those off. So I wish that the flakes were a little bit more fine in this one, but the sparkle is so stunning. You know, I'm I'm torn between wanting to get every single shade <laughs> in the range and then just sticking with the ones that I the one that I have right here and then the two from the palette. Um, because I do get a little bit of lid irritation with these. When I use them, I use my finger and I tap them kind of where I put the shiny shadow right on that inner kind of two thirds of the lid mostly is when, where I use these. And I've noticed, and it could be because those chunks, you know, they're, they're larger and I don't know if the edges, maybe they're a little bit, I don't want to say sharp, but they're not super smooth or something like that. But right in that crease of my eye, I've noticed that when I wear these, I do have redness when I wash my makeup off and it's a little you could tell it's a little bit irritated. So um, I'm gonna try to, to layer them over a primer and a shadow to kind of create a barrier between this product and the skin. Cause it could be, it could be the larger flakes or it could be the base product, that gel that's in here too, that's doing it. I'm not hundred percent sure. I just know that I've been experiencing a little bit of irritation with these, but they're cool. Like I said, I'm torn between wanting all of them and then just sticking with the ones that I have. Um, I think that I would be more tempted to grab more shades if they didn't irritate because I kind of want to wear them all the time <laughs> and I don't think I can get away with wearing these probably longer than two days in a row. I wore this one yesterday and I hadn't worn one for a couple days prior and my eyes were pretty red in that little crease when I washed my makeup off yesterday so kind of whole humming about it but they're they're cool for what they are. Again I just use my finger. I did see that 
Um, she sells an applicator for these too. I might see if I can get it when it comes back in stock because apparently it's really easy to apply them with that. But we'll see. We shall see. I will put a thicker layer of shadow and product on and then top this and see if that doesn't help with the irritation. But they are cool. So that's Sweet Tooth from the Infinite Chrome Flakes line. And then I also got a pair of the Faux Mink Lashes from Lily Lashes. And this is the Mykonos, um, I was going to say shade, style. The Mykonos style of lash. And I remember Jamie Genevieve on here loved this particular set. And it wasn't until I kind of grabbed them and really started looking at them. And I was like, I think that I would really like these. <laughs> and I do. They're very voluminous. They're very, like, you know, in-your-face type of a lash. And I cut off, I think I, I did two bundles on the outer edge of these. So, so there were two little bundles of lash on the outer edge that I cut off to kind of make them fit my eye. I almost like to turn almost all of my lashes into either a half lash or a three quarter lash. And I wore these yesterday as well. And they are really, really pretty. They're definitely a more dramatic lash, but they're so like fluffy looking and they curl up really nice. And they're just a really pretty eyelash, which I used to just think that, nah, those ones aren't for me, but they are for me. <laughs> now, now I want to be on the lookout for when uh, Lily Lashes does more sales or like during the 21 Days of Beauty at Ulta, they were doing 50% off of Lily Lashes. I'm like, can I go back a couple days and get the discount? <laughs> but anyway, this is a really pretty lash. So um, that's the Mykonos from Lily Lashes. They've been around for quite some time and I'm just now experiencing the wonders of that style. And then I also placed an order on the Auric beauty website which is Samantha Ravendahl's brand because she launched false lashes and I thought these were the coolest thing the way that she kind of came up with the concept and stuff like that so I got the style in Viseroy and these are made in China so this is the packaging and then it slides out right there and you have a compact that your lashes are in which is just super cool because you can reuse this or if you use these lashes up and want to put other lashes in here it's great or travel with this to keep your lashes safe i just really like the concept behind how she did these lashes and then also these are half lashes for me i did have to trim off i want to say two sections on each style that's in here as well because even though these are like half lashes they were still too kind of long for my eye or how I kind of like them so I did tr trim these as well but this I think is the most voluminous of I think she did three styles and I want to say this is the most voluminous out of the three so the top lash is a little bit more of your daily wear and then there's another lash on the bottom that has more volume so again, I trimmed these. They're really, really pretty. Very easy to wear type of lashes. These ones aren't aligned properly because I did wear them, but the little trays also come out of the compact. Just a super cool concept, you guys, for lashes. I really like that about how she did this. So we can see the two styles that come in Viseroy together right there. And it's from the Velvet Flutter collection is what it says on here. And it's just cool. I love, again, I just love the concept. Very, very cool. And then I also thought I would try out her uh, Plush Ritual Ceramide Lip Treatment because it looks really nice. So again, this is the Plush Ritual in Bare. And it says on here that there's 0.11 ounces of product. And this guy is made in Italy, so the box packaging is so pretty. So it's the same style of packaging as her cream shadow and topper duos. And then you put the lid up and there's a little spatula in there that you can use to scoop out some product. And I believe this is Jade. It is the cutest little Jade scooper ever. And there was a little piece of, um, what do you call that? Like foam in there to keep it like down from rattling in here, but I seem to have misplaced it. <laughs> There's also a mirror in the lid there. And then here is your lip product. And this has got a hint of vanillin in it. This makes it smell so divine. Like there's something about using this, which I've been using it every single night since I've gotten it, that I just absolutely adore. And it has the slightest bit of a nude tint to it that kind of neutralizes um, your lips, which is really, really flattering. 
and I love the smell. When I wake up in the morning, there's still remnants of this product on my lips as well, which I, I love a lip product that I can wake up in the morning and still feel some of it left on my lips. Gosh, the vanilla in here smells so, so good. Uh, so I really, really like this. Now, the, the, the only thing that I'm not crazy about is there's only 0.11 ounces of product in here, and it's a, it's a lip treatment product. So like, I've been using the Belief Lip Treatment Mask every single night for a while, and then also, I've gone through a couple of the Laneige ones, but I love the Belief one. There's 0.7 ounces of product in that guy, so over six times the amount of product. So if I use this every single night, I know I'm gonna run through it really quickly. And then too, if you repurchase it, I don't think that you know you need to get the whole casing in every single time and another one of the little jade spatulas in there. So I think it would be nice if there was like a refill option, even if it was just like a, a sachet filled with the product that you could squeeze back in the jar or something like that. Cause I know that the packaging is part of the cost for this. Cause this is a pretty expensive like lip treatment product. Um, and I'm going to go through it quickly. <laughs> so I wish there was another option, um, for when I use this up to repurchase it without getting another jade spatula and stuff like that, like a refill option, you know? So um, that's the only downfall. The product itself is absolutely divine, but you're not getting a lot of product for the money. And then two, as cute as that spatula is, um, it's an inconvenience for me. I don't, I'm not gonna like flip the top open, grab the spatula to get the product out. My hands are clean. I just get out of the shower. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna go in with my finger. <laughs> so anyway, that is the Auric plush ritual ceramide lip treatment in bare right there and again the product itself is very very lovely and then because i loved the first patrick Ta face palette so well i grabbed the newest one as well so this is the patrick Ta major headlines blush palette volume two there are three cream shades that are 0.1 ounces per shade and there are three powder shades that are 0.11 ounces per shade. So this is the box packaging and I will compare it to the other one as well. So this one's got a little bit more of a brushed rose gold to it where the other one is very shiny. I like that there's a difference in finish there so you can tell them apart if you're going to grab for one or the other. And then just like his first one, you've got the mirror and then a window covering your creams and then your blushes. So I have actually got um, the blush in the middle. I used a little bit of the cream and also the powder for my blush on my cheeks. And then I've also got on the highlighter and the highlighter cream as my highlighter. Now, when I use the highlighter right over the cream, it does deepen just a little bit. So I went over the very tops of my cheek with a bit of the Flower Nose Highlighter in Revelation that I love, just because it does deepen just a little bit. I think in the summertime when I'm a little bit deeper, um, I probably won't want to lighten it up. It'll go on really well because the shine on that is so pretty. Now, layering the highlighter with the cream either on top or the other way I think is a little bit too heavy for my liking on the top of the cheeks um, because the formulation of the powder highlighter is a little bit thicker of a formula so that's kind of how I feel about the highlighter in terms of layering them. Um, a thinner powder highlighter or like a loose highlighting powder layered over the top of the cream, that's very really pretty, it doesn't look as thick, but these two products together just looks a little bit too thick on my skin. Um, the blush duo is stunning, just like the first palette, just like his single blush duos, I really love them. It's a cream formulation that I can use like a little stipple brush and just pounce over the top of already set foundation and it doesn't disturb it. Like I don't swipe, I just kind of stipple it on and it looks really, really pretty. So um, I had somebody ask me if there were glitter in the creams on Instagram and I didn't notice I kind of got into the product a little bit more, but I didn't even notice shimmers in the two blush shades right off the bat. I did in the cream highlighter, but not the blushes. Now that I've kind of got into the product a little bit more, there are shimmers in there. They're not like heavy micro glitters. They're not product that you can like go like this between your fingers and feel any texture. They're very, very fine shimmers that are in there. And it appears that the shimmers in all three of the creams have got a, a gold shimmer to them. So let me swatch them for you guys. Um, I love the colors in this palette. And then the highlighter too, it's almost like a um, translucent kind of a highlighter. Oh, I love that lip balm one. But there's not a lot of pigment to that highlighter. So it's, it's almost like some golden shimmer suspended in kind of a clear base. Let me grab a little bit more. I don't feel like I got a good enough swatch of those blushes there. So those are the creams. 
right there. You're not going to be able to see the highlight, but here are the blush, powdered blushes. I'll put the little cover down here. And these also have a sheen to them. They are not matte products, but they're not overly shiny or anything like that. They're kind of like a satin finish. And you can see that highlighter. And for the most part, other than using the two highlighting products together, I love, I love the products in here. They just look super, super pretty on the skin. So that is the volume two one. And then if I show them next to each other, the first one is definitely more punchy. The colors in there are more vibrant compared to the newer one. So here they are side by side. It's almost like the newer one is a toned down version of the volume one, with the exception of the highlighter. Um, where the first one had all blush shades in it, the newer one has got a highlighter in it. Just so you can see the tones there. Um, I'll swatch it for you guys too, so you can see them next to each other. So I'll do the creams. I've actually got pretty good dips in those cream products. So you can see the intensity on those guys. And then the powders. One of my favorite blush palettes in my entire collection. I love it. So that's the volume one. And then there is the volume two right there. So you can see just a, a more tame version. And then it's got a highlighter instead of a blush. I also picked up the new Huda Beauty Love Fest, Love Fest Obsessions eyeshadow palette. So this is one of her little nine pans. Um, it's made in China and there's 0.24 ounces of product in here. Did I tell you guys where the Patrick Ta was made? I don't think I did. It's made in the USA, the Patrick Ta palette. So it's this guy right here and I get along with these little palettes from Huda pretty well. Um, there may have been a couple that there were some shades in there that weren't the best, but for the most part I get along with this particular formulation pretty good. Um, and this one here had some really pretty looks in it, but everything is mid-tone or deeper in here, so I did have to bring in highlight shades. But the looks that I've done out of this palette are really, really stunning. Like some of these shimmer shades are just super pretty. And the mattes are pigmented and they blend out really well for me. And I cannot wait to get my hands on her new larger palette. Oh, it looks so pretty. And then these guys. Those shiny shades are just really really pretty and then this last one really lovely color story it's just not a standalone for me because as you can see everything's you know mid-tone or deeper but just bringing in something like aether beauty pure diamond dust for underneath the brow and the inner portion of a little do it for me but Really nice palette there from Huda Beauty. So that's the Love Fest Obsessions right there. I also picked up the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Rose Metals Eyeshadow and Pressed Pigment Palette. So this guy here is made in the USA and there's a total of 12 shades that are 0 0.04 ounces per shade. And in comparison to the majority of her 14 shade palettes, those were 0 0.02 ounces. So you are getting twice as much product per shade compared to, again, the majority of her older ones. And it is also the same amount of product that was in her Nouveau palette. I guess there's 0 0.047 ounces in the Nouveau. So a little bit less in the metals compared to the Nouveau, but it's got the same style of layout in there. But this is actually the eyeshadow palette that I've got on my eyes today. And I am able to make this guy um, standalone, but today I wanted to put a matte underneath the brow just so it wasn't like super shiny, just to tone it down. Um, but I can use this really pretty metal shade down in the corner underneath the brow as well and use it as an all-in-one palette but the shades in here are really really pretty now i do get some kick up in those mattes and if i don't really kind of tap my brush off i will get fallout on the cheeks with those um depending on if i put like a cream highlight down or not 
it will or will not brush off. If, the, if I'm just using a powder highlighter, it usually brushes off my face, but they do have quite a bit of kick up. Um, the metal shades are the really metallic ones. I don't have like hardly any fallout with those, but this is what the packaging looks like. It almost has like a faux like leather feel to it. And that's the back. And again, this is what I've got on my eyes today. And the shadows blended out super nice. The mattes are pigmented with the exception of the fallout. I love the look that came out of it today as well. Look at how pretty those are. Really, really pretty. And this formulation is, it's pretty soft. And then these next guys. And then these last two. I just realized I forgot to swatch two shades, <laughs> which are these ones right here. I was like, that doesn't look like enough shades. So it's like got fall vibes, but also there's a little bit of a holiday vibe to this one here. And you know, nothing super revolutionary about the tones, but the formulation of this is very, very nice. Just give you guys a little bit more of a kind of close up right there. So that is the new Anastasia Beverly Hills Rose Metals uh, Eyeshadow and Pressed Pigment Palette is what they're calling it. I also picked up two items from the Tarte Holiday Collection. The Holiday Collections are starting to roll out and I'm feeling like I'm going to get behind. <laughs> but I picked up the Blush Authority um, what officially Precious Gems Amazonian Clay Cheek Palette. So there are five blushes that are 0 0.05 ounces and one bronzer that's also 0 0.05 ounces. And then this guy here is made in China. So this is the box packaging right there. And there's a little um, plastic on that. It says the Blush Authority. And then here is the packaging. It's a nice quality packaging. Feels really nice. And this is a nice blush palette. Um, I've worn every single shade that's in here. I've used this as a bronzer. And that's the Park Avenue Princess. It's got like a shimmer to it. Um, it's a pretty light bronzer. So definitely not like universal that one. Um, and the blushes are actually a pr pretty light blushes as well. I think it probably would have been nice if they came out with um, like a, a light medium version and then a medium deep version. And I would say that the blushes are like satin mattes. For the most part this one's got a little bit of extra shimmer in it but it doesn't show up a whole lot in um on the face and then the bronzer i noticed when i was using that it does smell like coconut the blushes don't smell like anything but the bronzer does smell like coconut so that is the tart precious gems and amazonian clay cheek palette right there and then I also picked up their Gilded Glamour Amazonian Clay Eyeshadow Wardrobe. So there are, there are two eyeshadow palettes in here. Um, 0.85 grams, um, 36 shades times 0 0.0299. So just about 0 0.03 ounces per shade is what you're getting. So this is the box that it comes in. And I really enjoyed the new Man Eater palette that they came out with. And these palettes are also made in Taiwan, which is where the Man Eater palette was made. If, this is the palette that I'm referring to um, right here. This is the Man Eater palette that was also made in Taiwan, which is, has got really nice quality. And these are really nice eyeshadow palettes. Some of the um, matte, the deep matte shades felt a little dry, but they were really pigmented and I was able to build them up and blend them really well. So let me show you the two together. The top one they're calling Glamour and the bottom one they're calling Gilded. So we'll start with Glamour. Nice, pretty weighted, um, hard plastic packaging there. 
and just a ton of shades. And both of these palettes um, are standalone for me. There's just a ton of different shades in there, both matte and shimmer, light, medium, and deep. But really good quality. I feel like the quality is, is pretty similar to the Man Eater palette. And then these next guys. I really like these um, opposed to some of their older kind of holiday options that they've done in the past. And then these guys. The shimmers are just like super, super shiny. Look how pretty those are. Bottom row. And then these last two here. So that one there is the glamour one, which is smoky kind of colors. Let's see up close a little bit here. And then here is the gilded palette, which is kind of warmer berries and neutrals. I had to crack the window because these lights are quite warm and it's a bit windy out so if you hear the wind that's what it is and then these next ones and then these guys And then this bottom row. These guys. And that one there is the Gilded palette in the duo. And that is a really nice holiday set. Like, it's one of my favorite from Tarte in quite a few years, these little palettes here. And that's everything that I got in that I purchased. And then I got in two really lovely PR packages. This first one I was just so excited about. I didn't know that it was coming. And it's from M Cosmetics. It's the Color Drops Serum Blushes. So they reformulated them and also kind of upgraded the packaging. So it says the original serum blush returns better than ever to amplify your natural radiance with a forever youthful dewy finish. Color Drops shades can be worn alone or mixed together to be unique yours. Now formulated with evening primrose oil and ceramides for more hydration and radiance with every drop. Redesigned dropper for quick and easy application. More to love. Same iconic bottle silhouette but now with more product in every bottle. Cool. So that's what it says on the card and I do have one of these from their original line which I'll show them next to each other as well. So they sent over eight shades and then there are two new shades as well and I've been wearing three of these shades in particular quite a bit um, because I can use a sponge or either like a stippling brush and I can also put them over an already set foundation. Again, I cannot swipe or try to like rub it into the skin because it will disturb it. But if I kind of pounce with a sponge really lightly or also use a like a stippling brush, I can get away with doing it like that. And there's something about these blushes that actually make, I don't know, how do, how do you explain it? Like when you put it on, 
it almost makes your skin look like your actual skin is just this color. You can't really detect product. They're that like lightweight on the skin. And I also feel like I, I've got the little lilac shade from the original range. So when I first used these ones, I thought I needed to use a little bit more product and I went into intense. So I actually think that these ones in comparison to the other one that I do have, they are a little bit more pigmented, but again, there's like something about them that you just can't detect like the actual product on the skin, but it makes it look that color. And it also has like, um, makes your skin look really hydrated and like glassy and glowy. They're really, really pretty. I'll actually start out with Little Lilac because I've got it in the original one. So the old um, packaging had a stopper where you push the button like this and then it sucks the product up. The new packaging has got a little squeezy on it like a pipette style. So let me do a drop. And I, I can already tell off the bat, the pipette with the squeezer on it is easier to use than the one where you push the button on the top. Okay, so the shades are pretty spot on, but the top one is the old little lilac, which is a little bit more translucent. And then the bottom one is the new little lilac, which to me, I just, it's got a little bit more pigmentation to it. So that's the little, little lilac and that's actually the only one of those that I have. And then we've got rose milk and another one that is my just absolute favorite is pink nectar. Oh wait, here, let me show this. So here's rose milk and here's pink nectar. I'm trying to put them on my hand so I can do kind of swatch two at a time. This is, I should show you the dropper. So you can see it, you can squeeze it and drop the product out right there. So here's a rose milk right here. And then here's pink nectar. These shades, these three shades are just so up my alley. <laughs> I also adore sunset sky. It's this really pretty tangerine. Put a drop of sunset sky down. And then Venetian rose, which is a nude. So here's Sunset Sky right here and Venetian Rose right there. And then we've got Soft Amethyst, which is kind of a, a um, purple kind of rose shade right there. So that one is soft amethyst. And then these next two are the new shades. So we've got autumn sky and then we have got forbidden fruit. So this one is forbidden fruit. So autumn sky and forbidden fruit. Right there. So those are the swatches of the new M Cosmetics serum blushes right there. Just an absolute huge thank you to M Cosmetics for sending these over. And then lastly, ColourPop sent me over their new Hocus Pocus 2 collection, which I had to like hold the reins <laughs> because I was so tempted to buy some products from this. And I was like, just hang tight and see if I get it in PR. Cause I, I do that so often. Like I'll purchase a couple items from the collection and then I get the whole thing in PR. But my mom and some of my friends reap the benefits of that. <laughs> so they sent over the new Hocus Pocus collection. There are these really cute little hair clips. Like, <laughs> oh gosh, you can put these. Oh my gosh, you guys, seriously. And then there is a Soul Body Find the Book Shimmering Body Powder, which I actually like to use these as highlighters on the face because they're like super shiny and really pretty. They do have a pretty strong fragrance to them, but this one is a really light shimmer. So this is the box packaging. It's very, very cute. And then here is the actual packaging. I will say that this style of packaging from ColourPop for me is, it's hard for me to open. So here is the highlighter and it's got like that super shot kind of formula, maybe a little bit drier. And this has got like a green shimmer to it that really looks pretty on the skin as you can see right there. So that is the Find the Book Shimmering uh, Body Powder right there. And then there are three lip glosses, one for each sister, Sanderson sister. <laughs> so we've got the We're Young, which is an orange with some golden sparkles to it. This is what the packaging on that guy looks like. 
So that's the We're Young gloss right there. It's like a, yeah, really pretty like tangerine with some uh, golden green kind of sparkles in that guy. And then we have got the Sisters Behold, which is a clear with some silver, gold, and green kind of sparkles to it. It's this one right here. So that one is the Sisters Behold. And then the last one, it appears scary, but it does not go on the color that it looks. This is Boys Will Love Me. And it's got a, like a black and purple look to it, but again, it's not that dark. And it's got blue, purple, and golden kind of sparkles in it. Very unique one. So that one right there is Boys Will Love Me. There's also a mascara. It's the BFF Mascara Butcherson. In Butcherson. <laughs> which I believe is that guy's name. It's been such a long time since I watched Hocus Pocus, which I should re-watch to prep myself to watch the Hocus Pocus 2. But it's a colored mascara. Really cute packaging. It's a colored um, burgundy purple mascara. I don't know why I felt the need to smell that. It doesn't really smell like anything. <laughs> so that's the mascara right there. There are also three Jelly Much eyeshadows. Again, one for each sister there. The cutest of packaging. This first one is Come to Play, which is a purple. And there are some pretty large glitters in these shadows. It does have a stopper in there. I hope that um, it keeps it from drying out. That's the only, that's one of the issues that I have with the Jelly Much. Some of their shades are absolutely stunning, but I do find that they tend to dry up on me a little bit quicker than I would like. But I like to use these as toppers over other shadows. They just put a really pretty sparkle on there. And then these ones with the uh, glitters in there, you can see there's some larger glitters. Um, because of the formulation of the Jelly Much, they go over like a powder shadow, shadow without having like the mess of like a loose glitter. So that one there is Come to Play, which is the purple one. And then this next one is I Am Calm, right here. And this one kind of is similar to the body highlighter. The white with some green iridescence to it, golden green iridescence. So that one right there is I Am Calm. And then the last Jelly Much is Shishka Baby, <laughs> which is a copper with some orange and gold shimmers in it. Right here, did I show you guys the cap? That one. And again, all of these do have glitter in them. Not my, There are micro glitters, but there's also like larger glitter particles in there as well. So that one is a Shishka Baby. <laughs> and then lastly is the All Hallows Eve Pressed Powder Palette. So there's 15 shades in this guy. This is the box packaging. And each shade, is, well, there's a total of 0.58 ounces of product, or 16 and a half grams across 15 shades. Packaging, packaging is super cute. It's a cardboard with a magnetic closure. And then inside, you've got their little imagery again in there, which I think is super cute. And then here are your 15 shades. This is a standalone for me because of the two lighter shades in there. There isn't like a, a matte brow bone highlight, but I can get away with those really shiny ones. And there are no pressed glitters and there are no super shock shadows in this guy. And they are also magnetized in the palette, so you can pull them out and stuff. I love the color story in this. You can kind of see it's going downwards in threes like trios even though I'm swatching across so those are the first four and then these next ones I just love the packaging on this collection Like even the attention to detail like around the inside is just really, really cute. But I love Halloween, so <laughs> there's the next four. See, it's like a lime shiny green. And then these guys. And 
these last three. Some really pretty matte eyeshadows in this one. Like how fun, how fun is that color story in that palette? So that's the All Hallows Eve pressed powder palette right there. It's like just a super fun collection. And an absolute huge thank you to ColourPop for sending over their latest collection. That is everything that I have for my haul today. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I will see you guys later. Bye.